Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a great Fender Rode sound in Ableton Live just using uh, the stock plugins. It sounds something like this. Yeah, so basically that's the sound. Um, I made it using uh, electric. And if you guys want to just pick up the, um, the patch yourself and just sort of jump into it right away, I've got a link in the description. You can download it there through the newsletter. Um, but yeah, basically this is using electric. Um, I feel like it's often an overlooked aspect of Ableton Live Suite. Um, a lot of people don't even know what electric is. They probably never even <laughs> loaded up. And yeah, it's basically meant to emulate um, the sound of Fender Rhodes and Wurlitzer type electric pianos. And it does a really great job of it, actually. Um, so in this video, I wanted to go over how I made this patch and how I made it sound the way it does and how I made it sound so kind of reactive to the playing that I do on the keyboard, whether I'm up very high pitches or very low. And a lot of it does with the secret behind uh, these settings. And of course, you can always pause the video and just try to match them yourself. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using the different aspects of the timbral qualities of the sound and really mapping them carefully to the keyboard. So if I'm playing in a higher pitch, um, the timbral qualities will change. And if I'm playing in a lower pitch, uh, the timbral qualities will change accordingly as well. And that's really the secret behind this instrument. It's a great sounding instrument. Um, but usually what you have to do is you have to go to the right side where the type is. This is going to really change the sonic character of the instrument right away between R, which is roll, uh, roll, um, excuse me, Rhodes and W, which is the Wurlitzer. Yeah. So basically I picked the Wurlitzer and then you go to the mallet section and this is basically where you get the body of the sound. Um, a lot of the sound of the mallet hitting the keys, the kind of low textural punch of the keys, also the overdriven sort of sound that you get when you really lay into a note like this. That really kind of overdriven effect is actually coming from uh, this section of the instrument. And you can see I kind of really carefully use the keyboard mapping um, so that when I'm in a certain part of the keyboard, I get the desired balance. And that really is the key behind getting a really great Fender Rhodes or Wurlitzer sound through just these Ableton stock presets and or stock plugins. And the thing is, is that, you know, this is a great skill to learn if you're a producer because you could really honestly spend, and I'm not going to name names, but you could spend over a thousand dollars just getting all different kinds of keyboard sounds and sample packs uh, for these types of keyboard sounds. And that's actually great. If you're into that and you want to have all those options, you know, feel free to invest in that. But um, this way you can actually just get it. If you have Ableton Live Suite, um, you can just throw in this instrument and design your own and you can get one that sounds really realistic like this one. So the secret um, tip that I would give people is to start programming the sound by going to the higher and lower registers first so that you can really balance out these different aspects of the instrument. Here you have the fork section as well. And this is kind of give you that really like um, high tinny character that you'd hear a lot in the Whirlisters, especially where you get up to the upper keys. And you can kind of slightly hear that sort of, it's almost like someone touching, uh, hitting glass with uh, lightly with a little fork on a glass uh, cup or something. It gives it that kind of right there, especially. So it sounds like someone's hitting a little piece of glass like that. That's really like a classic aspect of these electric pianos is that when you get up to those higher keys, they become uh, the timbral quality changes a lot. And that's what this instrument is just so great at doing. And you can see how a lot of the settings that I do are actually in the negative percentages. Um, so a lot of people, your first instinct is to push it up because we think that that's the direction that you go in when you want to add an effect, right? But really the secret is that these keys, um, particularly with fork, should go negative. And the mallets um, and force should go negative and stiffness should go negative as well if you want to go for a more realistic patch. Now, the great thing about this instrument as well is that you can play around with it as much as you want and come up with something that doesn't sound like a classic electric piano, but is also kind of just interesting and unique. 
Um, and I have sounds like that as well in um, my sample pack that I just give out in my newsletter. Um, there's a great one in here um, called, I think it's called Resonating, which has that kind of quality to it. I think it's mixed with the synthesizer as well to give you an even more interesting modern sound. But this, yeah, this can be the basis of a lot of different sounds, even if you don't necessarily want to have just a classic Wurlitzer or Rhodes sound. Um, and then you have the pickup section here. The damper pedal just has to do with the sustain pedal, which is really important to the tone as well. Um, and then the pickup section here is just, you know, there, to, and this is actually a really great section. It's there to emulate the sound of the pickups that are in these types of keyboards, um, which give it its characteristic tone. And it really helps you control the dynamic qualities of the sound as well. And yeah, that's basically it. I've got a little bit of detuning at the very end here. And the stretch here is negative 25. And something I really love about this instrument as well is that you have up to 32 voices of polyphonic playing. So it's really designed for players. Like if you want to have a great keyboard sound, you don't necessarily, again, you don't have to buy a third-party plugin. You can just use this. And I think a big part of the sound is once you get the dry part right is to start to get your effects in. And this is really the secret behind a lot of great sounds is how you put in your effects. And for me, honestly, I'm just all about using parallel processing. So I've got this classic ambience effect uh, rack that's in my... Um, sample pack as well and basically it's like something that you can add a really interesting tremolo reverb and delay and you can mix them in how you want so you can get your own balance of those elements the problem with series processing where people just immediately grab all these effects and put them all in uh, one after another is that if you decide to mute something like a delay or a reverb and it's somewhere in the middle of the chain it's going to then subsequently affect the balance of everything after it so even if you got your dry wet knob set exactly right on all those plugins, as soon as you turn something off or want to dial it back, it's going to change the relationship of the sound to everything that comes after it. So that's a big problem with series processing. And it's why I tell people in sound design, like, you know, bring in a lot of parallel processing in the main part of your sound design. And then at the end, you can add on a few things just to unify it. So that's what I'm doing with this audio effect rack. I've got the dry on. It's pretty simple, actually. I'm just throwing a glue compressor on it really to kind of bring the sound together and control some of those more kind of um, wild moments where you hit the keys a little hard. And you can see there how it immediately will take about 5 dB off and really compress it. But also compress it in a glue compressor is different than Ableton's regular compressor. The glue compressor is more of an opto style compressor, which is, you know, like the LA-2A or a lot of these classic analog um, hardware units that um, have been in so many classic records. So the glue compressor is great at that. So it's a different kind of compression that um, is a little more, not subtle, but it's just a little more musical. It's not going to be as aggressive sounding. Um, it's going to be a little more gluey kind of in the sound, if that makes any sense. Then in the tremolo section, um, I've got the auto pan on. This is really important because this is basically making the sound way more stereo. The detune here helps with that as well, but this really does the trick. Um, and you can copy these settings. And then I have the reverb. And the reverb, I just picked Large Factory because I just like the, the tone of it. I tweaked it around a little bit, so you want to copy these settings. But again, notice how I made a super stereo to make it a really great stereo element. And then the dry wet knob is a, at 100%. So it's there basically to like really be the effect that you dial in the amount here in the mixer section as opposed to having you know set it on dry some kind of dry wet ratio and then you're mixing in the reverb but you're also mixing a little bit of the dry sound as well and that kind of confuses the way you're designing the sound and if you want to take the reverb out you just hit the mute button and now you don't have the reverb and now you just have kind of a subtle little delay and that delay right here is another really cool trick that I tell people to do if you want to have more of a lo-fi delay or like a tape delay sound through just using the Ableton plugins. You can get a great sound doing the ping pong delay going into the cabinet. And you just want to make sure that when you pull up the cabinet plugin that you make sure the output is set to dual so it doesn't immediately bounce it down to mono. But sometimes that's a cool sound too. You know, a lot of these um, delay effect units like the uh, Roland Space Echo were many times uh, processed um, going through uh, mono. So <laughs> sometimes a classic sound is to make your delay mono. Um, but for modern purposes, you probably want to keep it as a stereo effect because that's just going to widen it 
and make the sound uh, really wide and, and uh, pleasing to the ear. And again, look, it's at 100% wet, so I just dial in the sound here. And I got a fair amount of feedback here too, and it's sort of mid rangey I'm cutting out the lows and the highs, and the cabinet's cutting out a lot of the highs as well and giving it more kind of a retro sound. And the microphone is on um, near on axis, but if you want to take it even further, you could take it to near off axis and it'll basically roll off the highs even more. But I just picked this one because I liked it. And if you change it to dynamic, it'll roll off the highs even more. So this is great for darkening up uh, the ping pong delay and making it sound more old, basically. And then finally, at the very end, I just have the saturator. So the saturator, you can copy these settings. It's literally just a little bit of the analog clip. I've only got a couple dB of saturation. It just ties everything together, and it doesn't give it too much saturation. It just kind of ties all the elements together and makes it very tasteful. It makes it um, a really, really playable, classic um, electric piano sound. And again, this is made using nothing but plugins that come with Ableton. So it's like... You don't have to spend money on third-party plugins. You can make this yourself. And if you got something out of this video, hopefully you can make it on your own. But if you just want to grab the preset and learn from it right off the bat, you can get it for free. I've got a link in the description. Uh, you just sign up for the newsletter, and I send this out to my new subscribers for free. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the video. If you got something from this, I hope you did. Uh, feel free just to uh, hit that like button, subscribe for notifications, hit the bell icon. Um, I always put out new videos about sound design and performance, and I've always got new music coming out, so we'd love you to follow the channel. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, have fun making music.